Welcome back, everybody. Um, I think it uh, could be safely said that traditionally, year after year now, Jaime Musan and Santiago Garza have been the most anticipated presenters to the Congress. We go back uh, 20 years with, with Jaime, virtually. We first introduced him to the wide audience of English-speaking folks. And the same with Santiago some years after. These men are giants. They are legends. And why? Contrast the way that their home country of Mexico treats the phenomena. Their news people actually report about it when it happens. When videos and witnesses are gathered, they actually put them on the screen and allow their entire nation to know what the heck is going on. And, and Jaime, Jaime is the Dan Rather, he's the 60 Minutes man of Mexico, okay? And when you have someone coming into your living room night, week after week, he becomes a friend, a trusted friend. And guess what happens when that trusted friend says, oh, by the way, haha, -ha, we're not alone, and we know it. You have an entire country that begins to look up. Uh, I, I, never see any, I never see UFOs. I, I don't, oh. They're up there. That's where you got to look. So look, I, I'm not beating a dead horse here, but contrast it to what we have in our country. And it's sad, isn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome the legends, Jaime and Santiago. Thank you very much. It's been a life, a lifetime with Bob Brown, his family, and this Congress. I still remember back in 1991 when he held the first conference, and even one before in Tucson uh, as a try in 1990. Since then, we have seen the evolution of this phenomenon. We have seen the evidence, the witnesses being every time more credible and the evidence clearer. Before we start, Santiago, Ituria, and myself want to dedicate this last presentation at the Laughlin UFO International Congress to Bob Brown and the Brown family, to Terry, <laughs> to Terry Brown, who is not longer with us, but she was the inspiration that held this event together for so long, to Nikki, who is now the main person doing this event. And I really want to, to dedicate this effort to the Brown family, because without them, this wouldn't be possible. Thank you. Thank you. Now probably you ask yourself, how is possible that every year Santiago Iturria and Mausan can bring so many new cases, evidences, videos. The reason is, as Bob Brown said, we have a television show. It's on Sunday nights from 7.30 to 9 o'clock in a national, national channel. 
that allowed us to be in touch, to be in contact with the people, and we receive this evidence constantly. And that is why we can investigate this. I really think that the only way to have a full-time job behind the UFO phenomenon is being able to live from it. Otherwise, it becomes just a hobby. And we need many more full-time investigators around the world. Because if we cannot do that, then we will continue having problems really presenting and getting the information, the investigation, the evidence. And I believe every single investigator in this phenomenon has to find a way to create a virtual circle, a circle that can reinforce itself, releasing the information, getting some revenue from it, not becoming rich, just living from it, and continue. Otherwise, we don't have the quality of the investigation that we need around the world. Santiago. Thank you. Well, good afternoon and welcome, dear friends, uh, to this presentation. Jaime and I are truly honored to have been invited again by the Brown family. And it's a real honor as we have been coming here for so many years. And uh, in this occasion, Jaime and I bring you, well, as usual, first of all, our investigations of UFOs in space, four missions from last year and uh, the fifth mission just from two weeks ago with great, great images that prove once again, that is undeniable that the astronauts are not alone in space. And also, of course, the new UFO sightings from Mexico. And around the world. And this time, we include a very special one from Mexico City, a sighting that took Jaime and me by surprise, something quite unique, one of a kind, that we have never seen before. So dear friends, I guarantee this one, you will be surprised too. And many other reports, and of course at the end of our conference, because you know my friends, 2012 is almost around the corner. Well, we bring you also another surprise, something beautiful that appeared over in Mexico. And I just can tell you, without complete, uh, with complete assurance, this is something beautiful. Just wait, and we want to invite you, dear friends, just relax and prepare yourselves for an exciting adventure into the mystery of the unknown. Enjoy the presentation. OK. This is the entrance of my show. Sam? Televisa y Mausan Producciones presentan Tercer Milenio con Jaime Mausan. Thanks to this show that has been on the air now for six years, we have a building of four floors with more than 30 investigators, astronomers, geographers, and uh, scientists who work with us, even though they are criticized and they are not welcomed by the scientific community in Mexico, they believe this is real and this is important. Thanks to this show, 
we have everything and we have the money to go around the world and do these investigations. Last year, I was able not just to go to England, but I went to Italy, I went to Turkey, as I promised, with my dear friend, Haktan Hagdogan. I was there with Jalsin Jalman, and I absolutely sure, even Roger Lear is, because he was there too, that this is a real phenomenon, what is happening in Kumburgas, at the Marmara Sea. We also went to Italy with uh, Antonio Ursi, and also Pier Giorgio Caria, and we were able to take all this investigation to Mexico. We have now a show in LA TV in the United States. It's a, Sp a Spanish speaking network. Probably you can watch it even though you don't want to understand it, but it's there. <laughs> and I can, I want to tell you something. After the first 10 shows, we were rated number one in the network. Uh, because of that, they got 20 more shows that are now being presented. And thanks to that, we have now a pilot in English for the American television. There are some companies with syndication that are really interested in everything that we are doing, not just in Mexico, but around the world. And I cross my fingers that very soon, for the first time, a program, a program done outside the U.S. is going to be presented to the American public with a different vision of this phenomenon. Real investigation, we will take the responsibility, not just to present two sides. I will take the responsibility that everything that we present there is going to be real. Because I think most of the programs that present both sides is because they don't want any responsibility. The investigators have to have responsibility, have to respond for what they present. And that's what I'm going to do. But this is the first uh, mission that we want to present to you, the STS-125 by the Shuttle problem. Atlantis. And uh, as usual, the first day of the mission is always by some coincidence or curiosity, the most intense uh, day in, in UFO sightings. I want to say something. All these are spacewalks by the astronauts. We have seen that every time that there is a spacewalk, there are UFOs very close to the missions. It's like if they are watching, if something happens, I don't know exactly what. And besides that, the images that you are seeing, like this one, the next mission, STS-127, by Shuttle and Avier, well, all these images are broadcast by uh, NASA on their own satellite. And uh, as you can see, suddenly, uh, appear strange objects, luminous objects, we don't know what they are. We call them UFOs because of the characteristics, the speed, sometimes they uh, change uh, moving like this one. This is very interesting. You can see like it's like uh, rotating, has some kind of uh, appendices or something. Well, every uh, sighting or every image where these objects appear, uh, show different features. This is a beautiful one. On the upper part of the screen, you are, you have, you are seeing, you are watching the, our planet. This is at, at nighttime, and you can see many objects passing by. Uh, sometimes these objects uh, approach uh, either the shuttle or the International Space Station uh, in this mission, the next one, STS-128, by Shuttle Discovery, we can see not only one, but two. These images are becoming more familiar for us because, uh, because we, we follow 24 hours a day for 15 days or 16 of, of uh, mission, uh, uh, all the transmission, as you can see, Sometimes the objects are very fast, 
we don't think this is space trash. We don't think these are meteorites. We don't think it's size. If these were space trash, it would be very dangerous for the missions. If these were meteorites, can you imagine? It would be impossible to survive in the International Space Station with so many. In many cases, you can see the objects standing still. But they are not standing still. They are moving 28,000 kilometers an hour. That that's the speed of the International Space Station and the shuttles. And there is something also interesting. Uh, these new uh, recent, well, recent missions are very different from the first ones. The first ones, the images were almost black and white, but at the same time, you could see the background full of stars and objects and whatever. But uh, suddenly, it seems that they changed maybe the, le the lens of the camera, so maybe they changed the camera. And now it's hardly to see in the background. This is a very interesting sequence in which you can see uh, in, from inside of the shuttle, there is uh, through the uh, window a small object pulsating that is passing by. These are the kind of uh, images that we uh, define the definitive uh, think are anomalies in space. Also, as, as Jaime said, this is a spacewalk, and as you can see, suddenly appear an unknown light, an unknown object, and sometimes. Uh, Sometimes look, look. exhibits a strange feature like this one. Now you are seeing this uh, big orb and also some uh, reflection or some uh, strange uh, appearance like in this moment. Now this is controversial and we know that. I mean, we realize all these images are controversial, but we are showing you exactly what is happening in space. Well, now, I I've like never seen one. anything like we saw before. You know? Yes, and, and uh, of course we are very familiar with, by now, with all these uh, anomalous objects, and we made a selection every time that we come here to the Congress of what we think is the most interesting. As you can see, this is the uh, shuttle. Sometimes the object appear more slow, sometimes more fast, faster. Now, this is very interesting. As you can see, the camera operator moved the camera and suddenly detected some objects on the uh, surface. Now, this is where the uh, shuttle landed. And uh, of course, all the missions have been very successful. We must recognize that NASA has been doing a terrific job in space. And uh, this is the recent one. Yeah. Just Two weeks ago, the STS-130 from Endeavour. OK, uh, I want to remember you that the only way we have these images is because of the work of Santiago Ituria. He stays. <laughs> when the missions are in process, he goes to a room, hides from the wall, takes a lot of food, and records everything, every single minute from every mission. He gets hundreds of hours. Then he has to review every single minute to find where the objects are. Because this is presented live by NASA, but it's never repeated. That's the only reason the only reason we know this is real is because he recorded directly from the direct transmission. Otherwise, NASA would never present this again, and we would never know. There are some comments that, where, in, where the hell in the world? Santiago Iturria and Mausana are getting these images, and this is being said by people from NASA because they don't know where we are being able to obtain. But anybody can do this. If you want to do this, you can, you can do it. Take the NASA channel, record, and please do. I know this presentation is going to be in YouTube. Listen to me there, outside, in the world. Record all the NASA missions, and then we will have every single evidence. Unfortunately, probably we are in the last missions for a while. As you know, the space program 
is going to be cut down. It seems that the war won, not the peace, unfortunately. Well, let's, let's uh, review the uh, last mission just two weeks ago. It was the mission by Schurl and Daber, STS-130, of usual, as usual. Anomalous objects, as you can see in the lower part of the screen, sometimes they uh, appear in, in a large number, sometimes alone, sometimes they make uh, strange movements, or, uh, as you are going to see in the next clip. Well, this is interesting. This is like... Uh, like some uh, image from a uh, Star Trek picture, but not. This is the real thing in space. As you can see, many things traveling sometimes uh, more faster. And you are going to see two or three. Look in the lower part of the screen, a big pulsating object. Now, these images is exactly what I am talking about. These are anomalous things in the space. But uh, you know, this kind of images sometimes appears only in seconds. So we have to be very sure to record them. This is another one. As you can see, the, the shuttle Endeavour was approaching the International Space Station. And suddenly, uh, what you are seeing in the, in, the, in the top of the shuttle is the device that uh, docks to the International Space Station. And this is a long sequence in which you can see suddenly so many objects passing by. Uh, and uh, well. Can you imagine? Well, the astronauts are there. They can see this action, of course. So the astronauts know no, 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 a lot of things, no? but you know, they have to uh, focus in their mission. But uh, we are looking, for example, as you can see, th that, that's another anomalous object. Uh, and, and they describe sometimes in, even intelligent maneuvers. Uh, well, in this mission, let me tell you, dear friends, we have a wonderful extraordinary image that you are going to see right now of a big, big uh, object, luminous object with a uh, very familiar shape. You are going to see it right now and you tell me if you like it. Of course, more images uh, showing, of course, the extraordinary structure known as the International Space Station in space, one of the I say one of the wonders of the world, but it's not on Earth, but also this is in space, but it's, it's a wonderful piece of engineering of the human uh, talent. Now, please see in the, in the lower part of the screen, look what is appearing. What you are seeing is the International Space Station, but look what is appearing right there. Look the size, it's huge. What is that? And suddenly, Let's make a zoom to see the shape, and you tell me, what does it look for you? Isn't that a saucer shape object? This just happened last week. You are the first to see these images. This is a mission. This is the last mission. This is very interesting. The, this object seems to be behind uh, the panels. Behind the panels. Now, we are familiar with this uh, incident because two years ago we presented a similar incident that we are going to remember. But look first the behavior of this, this uh, UFO. And uh, it was then changed position and uh, moved to the other solar panels, which, by the way, are huge, are very, very, very uh, big. And uh, it was like... Uh, reviewing in some way the panel we don't know and and this these images uh, uh, were very familiar with us because two years ago we have a similar incident in which took us by surprise by the way yeah it was the mission 116 uh, in December 22nd 2006 uh, and then we learned that this uh, intelligence and seems to be very interested this is solar panel. Yes, this is the STS-116. The, the object is in the other side of the solar panels. But look the size and look what he's doing. And also the camera operator is very interested in this action. <laughs> yes, this took place uh, at early hours in the morning, 3 o'clock, I, I think. So look how the uh, camera operator in Houston is following the action 
and look that this is since this is simply oh yes yes of course I mean you know uh, space is mysterious magic and these images uh, tell you a lot of things and finally Jaime yeah this is the the new observatory Torrid. that was installed in the International Space Station probably you haven't seen it it's beautiful they can see uh, 360 degrees around them and I'm very sure they will see many things through here now they have a real window to see the world to see everything around the earth and around them it's uh, really uh, unfortunate that uh, the space is going to be affected by the reduction of the budget to do the investigation in the space. I hope this can change in the next few months, in the next few years, and the United States will continue to be the leader there, uh, letting us know what is out there. So farewell, Endeavour. The era, the era of the shuttles are coming to an end and let's wait to see what the future brings to us. The Endeavour, this was the last uh, trip to Endeavour to space. Now, if you allow me, my dear friend William Rowling, I had a chance to see this video two days ago and I was very impressed. He records this video from his house, I believe in California. In Monterey, California. Uh, he takes the night vision, puts a camera there, and I'm going to present two videos from him that prove somehow that what you just saw can be seen from the earth if you have the right equipment. A telescope with night shot, that's what he does. For example, here, you can see this object in the space moving. It's so much higher than any airplane and it's not a satellite because we can see other objects moving in different directions. If these were satellites, it would move just in one direction Here now, you have in two different directions. Yes. Now it increases the speed. And there is another one on, on the opposite direction. Do you see it? It's exactly what they see in the space. You can see it from, from your home. And look at, now look at this one. This is, uh, the next is very impressive to me. And this is the work of William Rowlings. He has his boot there, and uh, you can get, look what happened. Uh, is this the one? No. No, it's, it's the following. It's Just wait to see what you are going to see. is uh, an amazing display because we, we just call that. Just follow this light that is pointing Jaime, and look what is going to happen right there. And then, you see it? Look at that. And then, isn't that a demonstration? Mm. And remember, this was recorded on, with the night vision goggles by William in Monterey, California, and uh, in his home outside, in the garden. He, uh, yeah, and he records every day. He's a devoted sky watcher, wonderful work of research. Okay, now, just... Uh, a, a couple of shots that were taken by the stereo mission that is around the sun, and this has created a lot of controversy and I wa just wanted to present you a couple of pictures of this because uh, very recently, January 18th, 
the, this uh, project, uh, the satellite the stereo, which are two satellites in both sides of the sun, were able to, to obtain these pictures. You can see these objects very close to the sun. And if this is real, of course, this is the sun. It would be the size of our planet. If these are UFOs, these are as big as our, as our planet. And we are going to continue observing this. I mean, we are going to follow this uh, process because the explanation that NASA gave us is unacceptable. They say that it's a failure of the system and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. These are some of the main events in Mexico and around the world, some of the most meaningful around the world, like this one recorded the 3rd of March 2009 outside Moscow. This video was presented by the Moscow, by the Russian television, and we were able to translate this, and I think it's very interesting. Look at it, please. I think this is very interesting because it's very similar to the many spheres that uh, many people have recorded in Mexico and around the world. And now we have one of those spheres. Many people have tell us this, that they come close to the houses, they observe people through the windows, and they get very, very close. But we never had a video like this. And that's why I think it's very meaningful. Again, another video from Russia, because Russia has become one of the centers of the activity of this phenomenon. And this is very interesting because it's very similar to a UFO that was photographed in Mexico last year. Watch it. We haven't found any trace of uh, manipulating the image. And this was very interesting because last year we had these four photographs and just in the first one uh, that was taken by a young kid, 14-year-old young kid inside the school, uh, and all, the, all his friends saw the picture that was taken, and we thought that was very interesting and very similar to the video we just saw from Russia. It's the same object. And this kid in Mexico took four photographs. Just in the first one, he got the image of the UFO. In the other three, it wasn't. And every picture has a difference of half a second. Then, the object moved in less than half a second to be in one picture and not in the next. Exactly the same attitude we saw in the UFO in Russia. Now, this image was taken 
if you remember the Mauricio Ruiz case in Alvin, Texas, this was taken the next night. And we think was very interesting, this was taken by a neighbor uh, next house to Mauricio Ruiz, who took the incredible UFO video that we presented in the last two years, and which has proof that produces high magnetic energy. Again, another video from Russia, 25th of April, a fleet, like we have seen many in Mexico. The same night in Slovakia was also recorded by the police, a fleet. This was videotaped by the police in Slovakia. It's interesting because now the fleet phenomenon is all around the world. If you remember, a few years ago we talked this and was almost in Mexico, exclusively in Mexico. Now it's around the world. I'm going to present now with the permission of my friend Haktan Hagdogan from Turkey, these three videos recorded by Yalsin Yalman. I had the chance to be there with my friend Roger Lear, and he told me, you can quote me, I never seen so much UFO activity in my life as I saw in one night in Kumburgas. Is that right, Roger? Are you there? No, he's not. Okay, he told me that, and to tell you this, and you can ask him, because I was almost, I was witness. I was witness too of the incredible, incredible interest that there is in Turkey around the phenomenon. The national television, national television live, frequently was with us. They went to the Congress that Haktan Hagdogan organized in Istanbul, and incredibly, our friend Antonio Ursi, who was here last year, and he recorded an sphere outside this hotel. He did the same outside the auditorium of the Congress. And the national television was there. And they were able to record it too. And all of this was presented in the news, national level, by the national television of Turkey. Because of all of this, they went next night with us to the beach Here to make a sky watch. Doctor himself. Uh, do you want to tell us <laughs> what you saw in Kumburgas? Uh, essentially, uh, when we came back from uh, Turkey, uh, I was telling everybody that we saw so many UFOs, I was tired of looking at them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, this uh, small town on the European coast of uh, Turkey, uh, Kumburgas, uh, we stayed up from uh, 12 o'clock at night to about 5 o'clock in the morning. And uh, in, in doing so, uh, we saw absolutely some uh, phenomenal things. And uh, things that were uh, duplicated that had been seen the previous year. So <laughs> I'm sure Jaime has got some of that uh, that he's going to show you. So you'll be quite fascinated. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you, Roy. Now I'm going to present you three videos recorded by Yalsin Yalman, this man who works at night on the beach. Works at night in the beach. And many times Hartan has been there with him. And we decided to do the same because we wanted to be witness. And we saw many, many things. Uh, we weren't there when he recorded these three incredible videos. We didn't have this log. We saw many things, but this is just amazing. This was recorded May 13, 2009. He has a GL1 camera by Canon. Uh, is this continue? 
But if you get one and you can put an, uh, how do you say, a, a complement to the lens. Yeah, uh, an accessory. You can duplicate to 200x. This is another video he recorded very early in the morning, 5.20. It was getting clear. You can see the UFO, and you can see this dog barking to the, to the UFO. And the best video that Yalcin Yalman, I believe, has he ever recorded was in May 17, 2009. I don't know if Hakdan Hagdogan, who is the expert in this, agrees. But you can see the object, and you can see one of the creatures inside with the door open. And there are at least four doors open. And this is very important because this time, Yalcin Yalman had a reference point, which is the moon. The moon is there. Without cutting the take, he goes back to the object. He zooms in. And then you can see that the object is there. And the camera, the camera is really powerful. Why are all these objects appearing over the Marmara Sea or Marmara Sea. We found that there is a, a fault that produces big earthquakes every 20 years or so. The last one was in 1999, I believe the 20th of August, if I am correct, and more than 20 people, 20,000 people died in Turkey because of that fault. Are they there because they are investigating the fault? They are taking energy of the fault? Or they are controlling the fault? I don't know. But what is happening in Turkey, especially in the Sea of Marma or Marmara, is really important. Our friend Antonio Ursi again recorded a very interesting UFO, the 21st of May. Uh, I never seen a UFO like this. This is the last uh, important image that he got. He has continued observing the sky. I am pretty sure very soon he will have another beautiful sighting. And probably something else in the future. I believe he's been prepared for something really, really big. I consider him the new Billy Mayer. I've been there, and I can tell you all these images are real. And this is the video you talked to them, right? Yes. Now, to the big, to the big part of the show, <laughs> if I may say that, because everything is, is good. But this one, uh, Jaime will tell you exactly uh, uh, the, how this sighting took place, because it's important, the information about who recorded this sighting and uh, uh, they, they will show you exactly how it was, uh, uh, how, how it, this uh, sighting took place. It's very important this video. It happened two hours after an earthquake in Mexico City. Not a huge earthquake, 5.0 earthquake, a medium earthquake. Uh, Pedro Hernandez, who lives in Metepec, exactly the area, where the creature was captured, that I, I will talk about that later. But exactly where we have many sightings, we have the extraterrestrial recorded by Sara Cuevas in 1994, and we have so many other events happening in Metepec. Okay, Pedro Hernandez lives there, but this time he was outside Mexico City, he was not in his hometown. He was north of Mexico City. And he was traveling in a bus when he saw this object. He went down the bus and took the camera and recorded the object. This is important. He had the sun in his back. And it's important 
because we have a second witness with a video camera recording the same event in the other side. That's against the sun. Because of that, you will see the same object with two different colors. First, please watch it carefully. This is the video recorded by Pedro Hernandez a little bit after 5 o'clock, the 22nd of May, 2009. Look in the center how the big UFO is spinning and at the same time releasing two rows on each, uh, of uh, spheres. Hundreds of spheres. Hundreds. So the spheres uh, went away. And then the big UFO slowed down the rotation. But wait. Wait to see what happened next. Then four spheres, four little spheres come around and go around the object, like recognizing the mother, and going now away. And they come back and they create what we call fleet. Probably this is a very important video because for the first time, we now know how these spheres come. This is the second video. By Alfredo Carrillo. Look. Releasing so many. Yeah. You see, it's the, in the opposite direction, and now they look black. But it's exactly the same. We have been able to, to see every detail, and you can see how they look intelligent. They are not just going away, they are in a line. The object now is speeding up and slowing down, this is a comparison, comparison of both videos. Do you like it? Well, this is something, let me tell you, huh? Certainly one of a kind. And, and uh, even, even now, look, you cannot almost see it, but the spheres, the little black spheres are around as the other ones are here. It's just the same moment. Because many people were saying, oh, that was created with a computer. But then, fortunately, we have the second witness. We have the name of both. We know where they were. We went there. And we know this is absolutely real. OK. Thank you. So we are now, we are now expecting a new one, hopefully. Let's see. And uh, yeah. this, is, this is video is very important because it so uh, has so much information for us, or for everybody, to try to understand what the UFO fleets mean. I mean, we have been a witness of uh, many, but this could be uh, the answer, or maybe can uh, help a lot for us to understand the origin of the UFO fleets. OK, now let's watch this. Uh Continuation, then 29 of uh, May, we had a fleet. Uh, we can see how this fleet is moving. And now this is fear recorded by Antonio Ursi, the 2nd of July in Capilla del Monte in Argentina. He was again invited to, give a, to have a presentation in Argentina. And then he recorded probably the best video ever that I've seen from an sphere. But this was not in his country. This was. And there are several witnesses you are going to see and to this sighting. Very close to Mount Uritorco, which is a, a legend in Argentina as a place of sighting. They, they took. Here are the, the witnesses. They are excited by this sighting quite unique Hola, perro. and also and also the road now this okay, is now, China July 22nd 2009 we have the same kind of total solar eclipse that started everything in Mexico July 11th 1991 this series occurs every 18 years and 11 days. 
it means that after July 11th, 1991, 18 years later, 2009, and 11 days to July 22nd, we would have the same eclipse. In Mexico, it lasted 6 minutes and 54 seconds. In China, 6 minutes and 39 seconds. Happened exactly the same. People went out to see the eclipse, and they recorded UFOs. The Chinese government took all these images and they promised to give an answer in one year. I don't know why they will take a year to have an answer of something that is so obvious. But for the first time, th this is an official promise. I don't know if they will keep this promise, but we can see these objects somehow, somehow similar to those recorded in Mexico on the same event. What this means? It means that these intelligences use this kind of events to present themselves. Are they markers? Because after this happened in China, the same kind of uh, phenomenon started in China. That is a flap. We can remember very fast the eclipse in Mexico. We can see now the old cameras that we were using 18 years ago in Mexico the VHS cameras, if you remember that. This was an historic event that began the, the amazing Mexican UFO way, July 11, 1991, and there it is. This it, is David Arreguin footage, the first that was presented after we presented th this in television. This video changed my life because when I presented this in television, so many other people gave me videos, and I couldn't get away from this phenomenon. I was trapped by it. <laughs> and until now, I, have, I am still receiving videos. This was the second video, the same object. Then some people said, oh, has to be Venus. Has to be, has to have uh, an explanation. However, fortunately, we had a th third video that I believe proves that this doesn't have a conventional explanation. You can see both. And now this is the third video. And please watch how the object is very near a dot, which we think is Venus. The camera goes down, when it goes up, the dot is not there, the dot is above the object. Here you have it, okay? It's two dots, as a matter of fact, which I think are Venus and Mercury. But then, when the object moves and the camera moves, the dot is not there, the dot is here. Then, it proves that the object in three minutes moves very far away from the dots. And for that reason, this cannot be considered Venus. And from then on, we have so many sightings in Mexico. OK, we continue through the year in the world. Antonio Ursi again, now downtown Milan. And uh, we can see now again a fleet, a fleet in Milan. The same spheres. Just like in Mexico, the phenomena, and it was recorded also by the mm -hmm. TV news cameras. Oh yeah, it was the media. recorded by the Ray Television. Look, like there, Ray Television. So there is no mistake, this is a real UFO fleet in Italy, in Milan. 
I think are the same objects that were observed in Second World War. We have another uh, fleet in Mexico City, again, 29 of uh, September. Not very clear, they are very high, but they are there. November 20th, yes. now it's in Bogota, in Colombia. In Mexico, people are not amazed anymore. No, nothing happens. Oh, we have a big sight. You know, yeah, one more time. And that's it, you know? No problem. In Colombia, now it's still big news, you know? In this UFO fleet, a certain commotion, steer. Two days later, in Metepec, Pedro Hernandez again, the same man who recorded May 22nd, he was uh, recording this airplane. He knows he likes to go, uh, record airplanes because he says that many times, close to the airplanes, you there can it see. Is. There it is, a UFO. And look at that. So a very right. energetic object. These are a, uh, the actual uh, UFO sightings that we're having in Mexico City, among other things. But wait, because what, what you are going to see next is extremely weird and bizarre. Jaime and I are very disconcerted. This, but is, this another is another fleet. fleet. This is another fleet, the uh, 5 of December. Black That's objects. Uh, maybe it did, in this fleet, happens the same thing that the sun is uh, on the, the back. The sun is on the other side. When the That's sun why is on you the can other see side, it. Yes. they look black. But as you can see, the formation all the time is preserved. No mistake. <laughs> and the UFO and fleets. Now, but as, wait. As Santiago said, this is really, really weird. You know, <laughs> this I think, we are very disconcerted by this thing in the sky. What is this? We don't know what, how to call it. Just watch carefully. And it's morphing itself. What can it be? This is in Mexico City. A video by uh, uh, one of our most respected sky watches. But look the lights and the strange dark like cloud or like uh, strange substance around, but I mean, this is, these are the kind of sightings that we are having now in Mexico. It's like a cloud with the, and it has energy inside or, or what, or what? And it's huge. So we are now having strange sighting of this the is, an unknown kind. This is really unexplainable. And this was recorded a week ago, 20th of February. At, at certain times, it looked like a flying humanoid. You have, you remember the flying humanoid sightings, also very weird phenomena. And sometimes the the light is so intense. We think it has it has its own light. It's not the the, the sunlight which is reflecting, but probably again, you remember the one that was recorded in 2005 by Horacio Roquet. This is Another the most flying mysterious humanoid. The most mysterious of all flying humanoids. Look at that. And it has some kind of device on the feet and also a light. So what do you think? Would you like to witness something like this outside of your home? There is a legend. Quetzalcoatl is the divine serpent, is the god. The serpent that can fly. The bird serpent. The colorful serpent. Is that a legend or has some reality behind? I'm going to present you this 
continuation because now is more we can see more often this we can see continuously sightings of the so-called evanis which are i call them biological entities unidentified fly, uh, biological entities because i don't know how to call them and there are many more witnesses now recording the same this first one is from 2007 and i present this because you can clearly see how this thing, whatever it is, changes colors. When it changes colors, you cannot say it's a balloon, a group of balloons together, or what? It's the same object, but now has different colors. Or different shape or different who you say different uh, characteristics and and uh, it's interesting to see how it moves smoothly it's a very high altitude you know it's a very high altitude so it at attracts our attention how it keeps all the time the same uh, the same uh, uh, characteristics in the, its shape Different it, it doesn't doesn't Different uh, doesn't bend. Okay. So at that altitude, now this is another one. This is from November the eighth, two thousand and nine, and this is Arturo Robles Hill, again recording this. You can see the movements of these things, and you can consider that it is prohibited to fly these kind of things in Mexico, because uh, the air, the airport is almost downtown Mexico City. Then to have this in downtown, in the central part of Mexico, is really dangerous because these objects. This is interesting. This video is interesting. Can you can size, see this, this small orb? The size of these objects is around 50 meters, probably. Many times these uh, objects release spheres, or many times there are what we call uh, the vigilante, uh, big sphere, very near. Okay, now we have a different uh, UFO hunter, which is Octavio Hernandez, and he records with an X-ray camera. And you can see, uh, after the object left, there is a fleet behind it. Okay, let me, let me put the fleet because you didn't see it. <coughs> And I believe there is a relation too between these objects and the presence of the so many spheres. Uh, here you have something similar and different at the same time. The movements, the, the shape is like a scratching, yes. And there it is, again, a small sphere to the right. Well, this kind of shapes always uh, disconcert us because the size, the movement, sometimes airplane came closer. I think we have a clip, is that right, Jaime? Hmm? I, had, I think we have a clip with an airplane yes. passing yes. by very close. Yes, we have. And, uh, but there has not again, been a single accident yet. Okay, again, we have a fleet after the presence of the object, like it releases all the spheres. Uh, the legend says that Quetzalcoatl, the divine serpent, would come back to claim its kingdom. And that would happen before the end of times, the beginning of the new era. Again, we are close to 2012. And it's amazing how these sightings have increased. You have had some, especially in Los Angeles area in California. Uh, we have videos from England, England and Portugal. Portugal. And probably some other places. But we have them 
in different countries, very, very especially in Mexico. This is a new uh, UFO hunter. It's uh, Ismael Lopez, and he has recorded beautiful, beautiful videos where you can see the movements of the objects or organisms or whatever they are. This has to be huge. This has to be more than 50 meters long, probably 100 meters, bigger than an airplane. And if an airplane confronted with these things could, be, could have an accident, a crash, even if these things go inside the turbines, would stop the airplane, even if they were balloons, then this is terribly dangerous. Sometimes they are with us what we call a sentinel, a little sphere that watches very close to the big object. You can see that. And look how, how fast both are moving now. It's like, like the little thing is taking the big one away. Now you're going to see the uh, this video one, that I was talking about. This is the one with the airplane. Uh, yes. Santiago. Just watch carefully because you will see the airplane, commercial airplane, passing by very close. As a matter of fact, an American look, Airlines plane. Look at that. And look. Well, that, that was very risky. And uh, you see? Okay, probably many of you were here a year ago when I presented this creature, uh, Mr. John Rao, who is going to help this conference after next year, and myself chair the property of this creature. Uh, I've been investigating this creature in Mexico. Uh, we are very close to finish the investigation. And we have amazing results that I'm going to present to you. And I have offered John Rao that when we have a letter from a scientific institution in the United States, a university, or someone who has the power to introduce this creature legally to the United States, we will continue the investigation here. So far, I haven't been able to move it from Mexico. I even pay the transportation and everything needed for scientists from a university in Europe. I cannot reveal at this moment which one yet. Went to Mexico just a month ago to continue this investigation. Uh, next week I have an appointment with the National University of Mexico to see if they can take the case, they can review everything we have obtained, and we can receive the support of the National University of Mexico. Because we are in front of an extraordinary case. This creature remains unknown. As you know, was captured May 11th, 2007, and it was drowned 30 hours after it was captured. The analysis done to this creature revealed that it could not survive on this atmosphere, even in water. If it cannot survive on this atmosphere or in water, where it comes from? All the scientists that we have talked to, that have investigated, except, well, not all of them, most of them, have told us we believe it's a 
primate, this is a monkey. A monkey, as the people from Europe said, from the New World. And I said, and I have asked many times, which monkey? And they say, we don't know. We don't know yet. We will find out. And they haven't so far. If this is not a monkey, and I don't think it's a monkey, what it is, where it comes from, I don't think it's the kind of creature that can take a craft from somewhere else, from deep in the universe to the earth. Okay, I don't think that. Where then, where it comes from? You know, it's a real mystery. How it came to earth? Are there parallel universe, universes? Are there doors in Metepec where they connect to each other? We remember the extraterrestrial that I presented back in 1994 in this conference. Probably you, you can ask uh, Bob Brown for my presentation back in 1994 because that video now it's, uh, it's gone. And you can get that here. And the extraterrestrial there is just amazing. And it's the same place, Metepec. I believe there is something very special in this place, Metepec. OK, you saw this picture. You saw the picture of this creature. You saw the feet. They look very human. The hands look very human. The skin is the real skin. It's not a skinned monkey. That has been proven. For those who say it's a skinned monkey, are absolutely wrong. Okay? You can see the little details. In one year that I was here to now, we have done everything possible with this. This is a new picture that I am presenting you. It's a picture that I obtained through other people. And you can see how the arm was captured there. You can see the face. You can see that the creature is alive. You can see the hand that is very similar to us. I'm sorry I had to protect the images, but that was the only way I could present them to you. I think Mr. John Rao is also going to make a big presentation out of this. Look the eyes. This looks very extraterrestrial. I'm not saying it is, okay? I'm not saying, I'm saying very clearly, this, this is an unknown creature. And this is a very important picture. Look the ear, look the back of the head, look how it is. Do you think this is a monkey? I don't think so. Then, if the DNA that they obtained. We have made six analyses of DNA, six. Not too many creatures receive six analyses of DNA. Just in one of them, it was found that was human. Human, that's why the scientists from Europe came to Mexico. And they said to me, this cannot be human. The samples had to be polluted. But I can tell you, as I told them, the samples were not polluted. I was there. I saw that the expert who took the samples did it carefully, with a mask in the, in the mouth, with gloves, with a closed environment, very carefully, and that he took those samples from inside the body. It is absolutely impossible that those samples were polluted. However, it's what they have to say. OK. They took different samples now. They went back to Europe. And they will have an answer very soon. Everybody asks me, when? I cannot pre pressure them. They are really good. They are very professional. And I like them very much. And I think they are, they are good people. I hope. If they find what I think they're going to find, 
they will have the courage to release it. Or I hope we are lucky enough to find those scientists who can take the risk to say the truth when they made and finished this investigation. This is another picture that I presented last year. There are more pictures, but we're going to reserve that for last, for another occasion. But this is enough. This is enough to prove that we have something here that doesn't look like anything we know. That we understand that this creature was alive at that moment. Here, you see death. There is death. Okay. They drowned it. They tried to drown it twice, and they finally drowned it. They, they did it for 30 minutes, two times. They tried, and finally all night. Had to die. Unfortunately, and I don't think it was right. I wish I knew. I wish I knew this was alive. I would have done my best to keep this alive. Okay. Eh, llama la atención obviamente pues, la presencia de, de esta prominencia que es la cola uh -huh. eh, los dientes que eh, de, de acuerdo a, al, al experto en odontología es la misma cantidad de dientes que, que se tiene que es de 28 por las características son características humanoides aunque presenta eh, o tiene la presencia de una eh, de una cola de, de bastantes centímetros casi del mismo tamaño del cuerpo el, el, tiene características faciales de, en los dientes, por ejemplo, eh, de las características también hum, humanas, eh, el resto del cuerpo más bien parece humano. Y nos llamó la atención un poquito el oído interno que le vimos, le vimos con la tomografía, era un oído aparentemente complejo. Este espécimen tiene una cosa que se llaman conductos semicirculares eh, diferentes, orientados en, en maneras diferentes, o sea, el del hombre aparentemente forman tres planos ortogonales, este es un poquito más complejo, tiene más conductos semicirculares y tiene otras estructuras eh, más dilatadas y más, más grandes, o sea, eh, básicamente sí es diferente. El oído, esa parte del oído se encarga del, equi del equilibrio, ¿no? de orientarnos en el espacio, al menos diría uno que, está, que es un animal que se orienta o que, está, o que vive en un medio diferente, un medio ya sea aéreo, ya sea acuático, no sé. En base a, a lo que estamos viendo podemos inferir que que es un animal que tiene ciertas estructuras cerebrales más grandes que, que, que otras. ¿Por qué? Porque tiene una tienda o una, una, una cubierta que se llama tienda del cerebelo eh, muy arriba, y por decirlo también de, de alguna manera, y eso de manera indirecta nos dice que es un animal que tiene un cerebelo o que el contenido de esa, de esa cajita eh, es más grande de lo normal, si lo comparamos con con el de un, un hombre, ¿no? entonces también una vez más asumiendo que, que eso pudiera encargarse de, del equilibrio de, y de los movimientos finos sería una, un animal que, que hace movimientos rápidos, que, hace, que tiene muy desarrollado el equilibrio y si junto a eso lo aunamos a lo del oído con más conductos o diferentes tipos de conductos semicirculares podríamos decir que, que es un animal que sí es hábil, rápido, eh, con movimientos finos, digamos. Yo de primera intención, este, al estarlo revisando, había yo considerado que había sido desollado y había sido desollado post-mortem, es decir, que el ser este había muerto en alguna otra condición, se le había quitado la piel, el, los epitelios, lo, con lo que haya estado forrado, hablemos en términos prácticos, y había sido plantado. Sin embargo, al estar revaluando nuevos cortes, al estar revaluando nuevamente los tejidos, observamos un tejido de revestimiento rudimentario, pero finalmente tejido de revestimiento. Y esto finalmente nos hace llegar a la conclusión de que este ser, así como está, así era como era. Así era como era. ¿A dónde sí. lo lleva eso? 
Muy buena pregunta, porque finalmente estaríamos, como una vez lo comenté, como una de mis hipótesis de trabajo, ante un, ante un ente, ante una entidad este, por, no, no descrita, no conocida, en primer término. ¿no? O sea que esto es verdaderamente extraordinario. Llama muchísimo la atención, es extraordinario. Yo particularmente, y mire que he visto cosas sorprendentes, no me había topado con, con un ser de, esta, de este tipo. ¿Este tejido de revestimiento haría las veces de piel? Sí, sí, definitivamente, o sea, sería el, el equivalente a nuestra, a nuestra piel, a las escamas de los peces, al de piel y plumaje en las aves, etc. ¿no? Un tejido muy primitivo, bueno, más que primitivo, este, no apto para la atmósfera como la concebimos aquí, ni siquiera para el, para el agua, ¿no? O sea, eso tiene que venir de otra parte. Pues, muy seguramente sí. Recordando ahí un poco, era un animal no común de lo que cualquier ser humano podemos ver cotidianamente. Me llama mucho la atención cuando lo tienen en una mesa, una mesa de trabajo, como un mesa de trabajo y de madera, y lo tienen atrapado en una, en una trampa. Y este animal, se, cuando nos acercamos a ver, no había mucha iluminación en el lugar, pero se levantó, se irguió y me llamó la atención. Al verlo físicamente, eh, dije, esto no es algo normal. ¿Estaba vivo? Estaba vivo porque se levantó. O sea, eh, no era muy grande, me diría 20 centímetros, no más. Pero la forma en que se irguió y que nos miró, a un ser humano pues uno le ve o a cualquier animal le nota la brillantez de los ojos. Estos no eran así. Era más bien un poco opaco el, 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 el panorama de sus ojos. Lo que llamaba un poco más la atención era el ruido extraño que emitía. Si me dijera, bueno, es un animal de cuatro patas y parece perro, pues ladra. ¿no? Este, si es un, un ratón, bueno, pues dice chilla. ¿no? no Este era un sonido ronco, grave, que yo podría haber asimilado como de dolor. ¿no? Eso que notaba yo, que eso también me hizo... Suponer algo más extraño era la brillantez con la, la piel, pero además que era como blanco, no, no, no era, vamos a decir, no era, no era pelo, no era pelo, sino era una textura de piel como si estuviera mojado, como los delfines, esa brillantez, ¿no? Pero en un tono pues, transparente o más bien claro, ¿no? No se veía agresivo, pero lo que llamaba la atención era la mirada o, o lo que parecía ser una llamada porque el ojo era sin tener como nosotros que tenemos una corona y un y, y la niña del ojo ¿no? no no lo tenía eso fue lo que me llamó más la atención al otro día yo le pregunté este que qué había pasado me dijo no ya los muchachos del lugar lo, met, lo metieron en agua con sal lo para matarlo. Le digo, oiga, pero no lo debió de ver más. No, no, no. Y se empezó a hacer ruidos todavía más extenuantes. Y así es como es la historia de, de, este, de este ser, ¿no? Sí, ese mismo día que cayó en la trampa. Es decir, no sé, a lo mejor una hora o media hora después de que lo agarraron o cayó en la trampa, me habló Don Mario para que fuera a verlo, porque estaba totalmente sorprendido también del animal. ¿Y, y cuál fue tu impresión a la hora que lo viste? Pues realmente así como que de susto, porque me dio pánico en el momento que lo vi. Porque yo no duré más que dos minutos viéndolo y me retiré otra vez a mi trabajo. ¿Sí te hizo este contacto visual el, el ser? Sí, de hecho a todos los que veía, porque estábamos, como estábamos alrededor de él, a todos volteaba a vernos. Es decir, por la desesperación a lo mejor quería atacar a alguien, no, no sé. Porque él ya se estaba comiendo la misma mano de él, se la estaba comiendo la que tenía atrapada en la trampa. ¿Tú cuando llegaste ahí ya se había comido la mano? Ya, ya se la había comido. De hecho yo no la vi, ya no vi cómo se la comió. Yo cuando llegué ya no tenía la mano. ¿Tenía sangre? En la boca, sí. O en el hocico, sí tenía sangre. Pero nada más, ya no vi de, de más, más cosas, pues. ¿De qué color era? Eh, de hecho, él no tenía, bueno, aparentaba no tener piel y era de color rosa, algo así más o menos, o transparente, no sé. Y tenía los ojos oscuros como un gris oxford, totalmente oscuros. ¿No, no parpadeaba? Nunca vi que parpadeara. En ¿eh? los dos minutos que lo vi, nunca vi que parpadeara. Uh, este eh, son las pruebas del DNA, para aquellos que saben, pues aparentemente el resultado de esto se trata de un DNA similar al de los seres humanos, 
vimos eh, Oh, how interesting, isn't it? How interesting. I'm sorry, I was listening in Spanish and I just... Okay, thank you, Santiago. Okay. Okay, let's start again. Uh, this is the DNA, uh, we can see it. Uh, this is the, the DNA that was obtained by this university in Europe. Uh, they asked me not to tell who they were until this is finished. But this is what they did, and uh, we can see, uh, or those who understand, they will find that this is human DNA. We, I present this because there were some people who were saying that we hadn't done this and this was not true. It's true. It's true, and this uh, ha case has attracted the attention from all over the world, uh, especially Germany. The news from Germany went there, the most important paper, History Channel went there uh, from China, Japan, uh, Korea, and other places. Then uh, I think this is going to grow even more. And I hope this will become the physical evidence that many people have been waiting for so long. We don't know yet. We have to be very careful. We have to do it as science marks that this has to be done. But we will be there to be sure that the truth will be said. Thank you. As you know, I, I am very, uh, I have a passion for the crop circles. I go there every year, and I am sorry for those who think that this is not real. For me it is, I've been walking there, I have seen so many things in the middle of the rain, I have seen the details inside the formation, and I really think uh, these are messages, these are signs that are appearing every year as uh, Michael Griffman said, as love, letter, love letters that are left under our door. This year we had something very interesting. This formation appeared in three different stages. That was the first, this was the second, and the third one, uh, it was a message. We have to analyze this message we've been trying we find pyramids there, we find serpents there, we have find many signs that look like uh, all scriptures from all cultures. This looks uh, Aztec. Many times the, the formations look uh, Mayan. This is the inconclusive because it appeared in two different fields, in corn and, I mean in wheat, and uh, we said pastizal and in grass. This is Mayan, this is talking about the sun cycle. Uh, we have to be very careful with the sun, believe me. I think if something happens in 2012, the sun is going to be responsible. Now the activity of the sun is growing very, very fast. It is slowed down for three years. I was there when this formation appeared. It rained all night, all night. It was really wet that morning. And it was there and it was perfect. And this is a beautiful owl. Look at it, how beautiful it is, how perfect it is. Look how nice is this formation, how complex it is. And this was the last. And this, according to some, is the sun and the wind of the sun. I don't know. As you remember, oh well, 
uh, we have many formations this year in different countries, Germany, Italy, Spain, Russia, different countries, Slovakia. Okay. You see the phenomenon is growing and these are signs. And if you look inside the formation, the detail we found last year, it's like they are handmade now. It was amazing. Look at it. For those who think that this can be done in a simple manner, Uh, we saw so, so much more last year. For many, this was the most important season ever. And look at this one. A friend of mine recorded this. Next day, a formation was there. For me, there is no question. This is uh, related to another intelligence, and these are messages. We remember last year this incredible cross. I don't think it has a, a religious meaning. I think it's a message of love. I think it's a message to remain us that we have to love each other that we have to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. I think so many times that phrase has been repeated that doesn't make sense to many. So just think about this. The world would be different if we love the neighbor as we love us. And I think that's the key for the future. That's the key for 2012 and beyond. We have three crosses last year. The last one had a message in binary codes, and this message was very simple. It's a letter, it's a word of six letters, which is beware. It's the second message we had, the first one in 2002. Much pain, but it's still time. Second, beware. I think the third is coming. And it's gonna be the key <clears throat> for what it means, really. When we arrived, this formation had been caught, but it was surprising because it was still there, like it, it was waiting for us. And then we remember this from 2005, August 14, 2005, six spheres making, seven spheres making this beautiful cross in, in uh, uh, Florida. In San Petersburg? No. San Petersburg. In San Florida. Florida. San Petersburg in Florida, just 15 days before Katrina. And we have this from December 2008 in Russia. What it means is what I told you, it's, uh, it's not religious, it's, it's very human. And the way to confront any kind of danger is by being together. It's very difficult, I understand, it's like almost utopic. But I think we have to find a way to be brothers again. Something very incredible and interesting is that these signs that have been appearing in different places, like this in Russia. Yes, as you can see, very strange cloud that resembles human eyes. What could this be? Uh, probably signs, signs in the sky. Some people say, oh, well, yeah, 
it's uh, that's a, a coincidence. This is another one. But then we have a second coincidence, also in Russia, right? Also in Russia. And the third is also in Russia, in, in Moscow, last year. Uh, I think it's important because now what we were seeing in the crop circles, in the ground, now we're looking that in the sky. If we read the Bible, we can clearly see many times a big sign appear in the sky and the people pray, okay? Now we try to explain everything we see. It's not a sign, it's, oh, it's natural, it's a phenomenon. Something very important happened December 9th, 2009. First in Moscow, in Russia, two young people were moving in a car and they recorded with a cellular phone something very extraordinary. We have analyzed this video over and over and over. The possibility of this being a hoax are really, really dim, almost non-existent. I would be very surprised if this is not real. I want you to look at it because it is like a, in the United States, not too many people realize of what happened in Moscow over the Red Square, the Kremlin, around 4 to 5 o'clock in the morning of December the 9th, 2009. This was presented by the news in Russia. And you can see here this large pyramid floating over the Kremlin. It was presented by all the newscasts in Russia. В интернете уже полно комментариев, в частности на YouTube. Кто-то уверен, что инопланетяне заинтересовались политической жизнью России. It is not very clear, but it's there, and it's more than 1,000 meters long. Just consider that what it means. And we have something similar in the morning presented by the news. We don't know if it's the same. We don't know if it's the same place or it's a different place. But this was also presented by the Russian media. We are trying to make a, a deep investigation in Moscow to understand what happened because on June, June 29, 2003, we have the same in Mexico City. This is the cover of an important newspaper in Mexico, Uno Mas Uno, One Plus One. And you can read here, it's a commotion Commotion thousands, more than 50 meters per side, and it's gray, and was seen close to Santa Fe Center, which is outside Mexico City. This was recorded at 23rd of May, 2009, by Arturo Robles Hill. Looks also like a pyramid about Mexico City. The same uh, next month, the month after this, was recorded in Southampton, in England. These UFOs, these pyramid UFOs, or whatever you want to call them, are becoming common around the world. And I think we should look to them carefully. This was recorded in Metepec, uh, November 22nd, 2009, by Pedro Hernandez, one more time. And as you can see, the shape is, is very clear. It's a triangle shape UFO, more like a pyramid shape, and uh, it's descending, as you can see here. Now, this 
videos are important because reveal that these kind of objects really exist and are appearing. And on December 11th, again in Russia, the Russia television presented this object that looks like a pyramid having a, a tail over Moscow to Moscow. Right? Okay. Just a few minutes after that. Thank you. Just a few minutes after that, 7.50 in the morning, in Tromso, in Norway, there was a Blu-ray Blu -ray coming, and then making a spiral. This spiral was photographed by probably hundreds of people in Tromso, and they also recorded the videos of the object or whatever it was. Just a few minutes later, somebody, a scientist said, oh, this has to be missile, a missile from Russia. They found out, yes, Russia was making some exercises a thousand miles away. They immediately, automatically consider this has to be a Russian missile. Next day, it was all over, oh, uh, the mystery solved, it was a missile from Russia. The captain of the ship said, yeah, uh, yeah, we, we sent a missile, but that was all we did, and that's it. The mystery was solved. The media didn't take the, this in consideration anymore. Five days later, the Secretary of Defense of Russia says, it was not ours. We know that what we sent went not into Norway. It was not ours. Can you imagine a missile going to Norway because it failed? That would be a terrible problem for Russia. <laughs> then the Secretary of Defense from Norway says, it was not Russian. This was not a missile. But the media is not listening anymore. This information was never released. The mystery was solved, and that's all we wanted to know. But the truth is, is that the mystery remains, and it's even bigger, as I'm going to show you right now, please. You can see some of the images, and you can tell me if you think this is a missile. Is this a sign in the sky? These are some of the videos, and you can clear see, clearly see a big black hole that is created inside. Is this a dimensional door? Is this a message? What it is? The thing is that this has happened before. It happened in China in 1988. At that time, the uh, Chinese TV news gave a full report of this strange phenomena in the skies of China, as you can see, very similar to the one from Norway. The change of directions, please look at it oh, very yes. carefully. This change right directions from one look, side to the other it's going side. One side and then the other. So we discovered this in uh, in the archive, and we made a comparison, and uh, look how similar they are. And then, this is very important, because we have a very old proof. 
we have petroglyphs all around the world with these spirals. I've seen them and I always ask myself, what is this? Please, let's watch it, please. Let's watch it. These are the petro petroglyphs which uh, have been considered at least 3,000 years old. No, 1,000, no, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 years old. And they are all over All over the world. The world. But, but now we have some link with the spiral. Uh, it means that these are signs. Look at this. These are uh, in, the, in England, and it's almost the same. And we have many. We, we present you just a couple of examples from England. But now, something even more extraordinary. In February 18th, 2010, yes, we, we have something that had never happened before. And also this in is in Finland. Ah, this is Tromso. This, oh, this is, is Tromso, Norway. Norway. This is Aurora Borealis making a spiral. But something extraordinary happened. The same day, more than 1,000 kilometers away, 600 miles away, the same thing happened, but in Finland, at the same time. Coincidence or not? And these are beautiful pictures taken by uh, professional now, photographers. This is in Finland. All these pictures were presented by spaceweather.com, which is a site by NASA. Then you can consider this official. There is no possibility that this, those are fakes. And the most incredible thing is that this morning I wake up with an incredible news. Jaime, there is a third one, and this happened two days ago, and this happened again in Norway. And there it is. In Baloya, Norway, we have the third spiral in the sky as an aurora. Are these signs in the sky? Are these signs on Earth? It's the Bible, say, the Bible says, before the end of times, you will see signs on the earth and in, on the sky, right? And this is not all. <laughs> now, I have what? This is for my friend Bob Brown, for his family. This is a first. This is the release, official release. I had to present this in a, briefly in a television program, and you will understand why I had to do it. But this is the official release of this evidence that I've been investigating since October that I received it. Last October, I had a series of presentations in Los Angeles with my dear friend Javier Martinez. And Somebody came to me with a picture, and he said, what do you think? And I said, if this, is, if this is real, it's extraordinary. Do you want to investigate this? And I said, yes, okay, the people who took the picture will come tomorrow. She didn't come, but she sent me the picture. And I started the investigation. I have some reserves, but they have been proved wrong, because I can't put my hand on fire. What, that what you are going to see is real. It has been tested by people in Mexico City, in Monterrey, where Santiago lives, and in, it, and in Italy. The three experts agree this is a real picture, this is not Adobe Photoshop, this is not a hoax. And besides, I found a very famous man from the Mexican television, who was there at the moment when the picture was taken. And incredibly, this man is very skeptical. 
is a Philip class of Mexico. <laughs> and he was there. I have fought with him in television so many times about the crop circles and this and that. And now he had to say, Jaime, for the first time, I agree with you. <laughs> okay. This picture was taken July 24, 2 o'clock in the afternoon with 35, 31 seconds. We will see that clearly later. Okay. No, 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 please, please, please. Continue, continue. The image, please. Thank you. Realizada con los programas como normalmente lo venimos haciendo. Eh, no me parece una foto falsa, me parece una foto muy interesante. Entonces se presenta este fenómeno como diciendo, como un faro, ¿no? Como que volteen a ver qué hay aquí en México, ¿no? O sea, como que algo viene, ¿no? Algo posible. Yo quisiera pensar en eso, pero definitivamente no es algo trucado. Pero de que la luz sale, eso. O sale o entra, o sea, me, es muy impresionante la imagen porque se ve muy, muy delineado el lugar donde sale la imagen, pero no se ve tan, tan charmless. O sea, en, la, en, la part, en, la, en, en el borde de la imagen se ve que de ahí sale la luz. O sea, no me parece que haya una manipulación ahí. De, es decir, de estamos ante una fotografía extraordinaria. Extraordinaria y fortuita y afortunada, ¿verdad? Pues, o sea... La persona que la tomó pues puede decir que tomó algo fuera, fuera de este mundo, ¿verdad? These are the three pictures that were taken. This is some of the analysis made in Italy. They were able to see exactly where it was taken because this was taken with an iPhone and they were able to locate exactly where the position of the camera was uh, regarding the, uh, the pyramid. They also found an object very close to the pyramid, and they can, you can see this light coming from the pyramid up. The witnesses never saw when this happened. This must be a pulse. It's a pulse. It's something very brief. It didn't last it. Probably one hundred of a second. This is Giuseppe Garofalo in Italy. Quindi dei meta metadati in Exifer. Qui questo elemento eh, mi ha portato alla conclusione che l'immagine è reale, le immagini sono concrete, sono vere e sono autentiche. As you can hear, the images are real. Poiché there is no Impresionada porque no esperábamos ver lo que vimos. En el momento de estar viendo la foto, a la par estaba una señora, una de los de nativos indios, este, orando y, y, termin, y vi que ter, terminó de orar y se la, se la muestro y me dijo lo que era un, un eran mis antepasados, mis abuelos no sé, este, y me dijo que no la compartiera con nadie. Como hay gente que cree, hay gente que no cree, y aún yo, sí, pues porque me pasó a mí, yo creo, pero yo creo que si yo la viera así también, o sea, es, es difícil de creer. Estamos contentos porque, pues, no sé, tal vez puede ser algo que pueda llevar, no sé, a nuevos descubrimientos o algo. Incluso andaba un, no sé, se me olvida el nombre, era un... Uno es un comediante mexicano que andaba ahí visitando las pirámides, también se le enseñé a él y me dijo lo mismo, dame tu email y mándamela, porque esto, y dijo la palabra, dijo que estaba buena la foto esa, sí, sí. Jaime Maussan, un aplauso por favor. Bueno, vamos a empezar a entendernos en algunas cosas, Jaime, en este momento, porque estamos al aire y los dos estamos comprometidos aquí. Aquí es. Tú dijiste que tú me quieres entrevistar a mí, ¿ok? Sí, claro. Bueno, ¿Quieres eh, pasarte a esta mesa? Te invito no, a esta y yo me siento ahí. No. ¿Quieres? No. no. Vamos a hacerlo. Eh, Un aplauso para Jaime Maussan, eh, por favor. Eh, Música, Martín, algo, no sé. 
A ver. Okay. El caso es que yo estaba parado en una esquina, el guía, el guía estaba en la otra y me estaba demostrando cómo de lado a lado del juego de pelota se oye la voz si hablas contra la pared. Sí. Entonces, esta, esta, esta circunstancia de pronto se acerca un hombre y me dice, oiga, ¿usted sale en la televisión? Sí. Mire esta fotografía y me enseña su, su iPhone, así. Sí. Y me enseña, vuelvan a poner esa fotografía, la fotografía que Jaime acaba de traer. Esta fotografía se certificó, fue tomada directamente, no hay una segunda, no está, digamos, trucada, emplastada, inclusive está eh, como el iPhone te da la posición del geoposicionador, el GPS, está localizado perfectamente en Chichen Itza, por tanto, no hay posibilidad de truco. Además, tú la viste ahí. ¿Esto es lo que viste? Exactamente, esa es la foto. ¿Y qué fue la palabra que dijiste? Porque a mí sí me la dijeron. Yo en ese momento le dije al guía, oiga, ¿qué opina usted de esto? Y el guía la tomó y dijo, uy, esta hay que guardarla. Dice, de estas hay pocas, pero sí ocurren. Vamos a cambiar. Ahora yo voy a entrevistar a Jaime Maussan. Música, Martín, por favor. En lo que nos cambiamos, aplauso para Jaime Maussan. Pero lo más importante para mí es, es que es verdad, que ocurrió y que tú estabas ahí. La foto, damas y caballeros, yo certifico la historia que acabo de contar con lo que tengo, mis sentidos. Mi vista, mis oídos, mi tacto y mis genitales, que son todos los sentidos que tenemos, ¿no? Este, <risa> yo certifico que sí, efectivamente, la historia como la cuentas, así yo la vi. Y efectivamente esta fotografía, por lo que yo entiendo, a menos que hubieras armado todo un show para que yo estuviera en Chichen Itza y tú supieras... No, esta, esto efectivamente así fue. Y el hombre que la tomó estaba muy sorprendido después de haberla tomado. En eso sí, eh, por su investigación... Aplaudo a Jaime Maussan. Espero que hagan lo mismo. Y esto sí es importante. Y esto sí es muy interesante. Pongan la foto de Chichen Itza, por favor. Pongan la foto otra vez de Chichen Itza. Es la primera vez en toda mi vida. ¿Cuántos años llevamos de conocernos y de pelearnos? Como 15. Como 10 o 15 años, ¿no? 15 años, sí. Pon la foto de Chichen Itza, por desde favor. Desde la radio, ¿no? La gente le gusta ver esto. Y a la gente... Desde el radio nos peleábamos desde sí, la radio. bastante. Ponla, por favor. Acércala un poco para que la gente vea esta fotografía que fue tomada en Chichen Itza. Jaime tiene mejor el día que yo. ¿Qué día fue, Jaime? El... Eh, 24 de julio a las 2 de la tarde con 31 segundos. Y eso porque julio. está en la información del Metadata que tienen las fotografías dentro de los eh, zoom, in, zoom in a la foto, por favor. Dentro yo mismo las... no la entiendo. Yo estaba el día en que se sacó esa foto, conocí a la persona que la sacó. Y es la primera vez en 15 años, y así es a veces la vida, Jaime Maussan, así es a veces la vida, en que encontramos un punto de acuerdo. Un aplauso para Jaime Maussan, la más caballero. 15 años, regresamos con la... Thank you. This is the incredible picture, and now a last word, please, the lights off. Señales en el cielo, las señales del cambio. La profecía final nos habla de un mundo distinto, sin garantías. Un mundo que será construido por nosotros, para bien o para mal. Una realidad que podría convertirse en el paraíso en la tierra, pero que también podría convertirse en un verdadero infierno. Una realidad de la que no podríamos escapar. Una realidad que viviríamos todos los días, en todo momento, donde ni siquiera la muerte se convertiría en un alivio. Sin embargo, podríamos convertir esa realidad en el mundo que hemos siempre deseado. El desarrollo de la tecnología, especialmente de los medios de comunicación, nos permiten la posibilidad de crear un mundo sustentable, un mundo justo, donde el ser humano encuentre la paz. Hoy esas señales que vienen de otra dimensión tratan de advertirnos. Algo quieren decirnos, pero nos mantenemos ajenos e insensibles. 
preferimos ignorarlas o encontrar cualquier explicación que satisfaga nuestros propios intereses. Ahí están las señales. Nuestro mundo y nuestra realidad desaparecen ante nosotros. Las formas de vida que habitaron este planeta por millones de años son destruidas todos los días. De acuerdo a números oficiales, más de 5.000 especies se extinguen para siempre cada año. ¿Cuántas más antes de quedarnos solos? Todos los días mueren seres humanos de hambre y de sed. La injusticia y la violencia se han convertido en nuestra realidad cotidiana. Ante nosotros, seres inteligentes pretenden iniciar una comunicación. Nos envían señales a nuestros campos de cultivo, señales que también se presentan en nuestros cielos. Nos observan sin poder cambiar nuestra realidad. Impotentes esperan el momento que podamos superar nuestras diferencias y encontremos el verdadero sentido de la existencia. Tenemos miedo. Observamos las catástrofes que sufren algunos y nos preguntamos cuándo nos sucederá a nosotros. Sabemos que la violencia se pasea fuera de nuestros hogares. Escuchamos los lamentos, pero nada o muy poco hacemos. El cambio que los mayas anticiparon hace más de 5.000 años se encuentra dentro de cada uno de nosotros. Con valor tenemos que enfrentar nuestro destino y convertir esta humanidad en una sociedad cósmica que sea capaz de volar en los confines del universo, llevando con ella los valores más exquisitos de la creación. Dios existe, no es un ser, es una intención inteligente. Si la naturaleza es cruel y descarnada, Dios es el bien que solo se puede manifestar a través de la inteligencia a través de los seres que saben pensar y que han decidido el bien sobre el mal. Ahí en ellos es donde Dios vive. No se puede explicar, pero se puede sentir. ¿Cuánto tiempo? ¿Cuánto más? ¿Hasta cuándo? Las señales en el cielo nos dicen que muy pronto. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. 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 Thank you very much. Gracias. Thank you. Jaime. Santiago. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Thank you all. Thank you all. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, let's take a little break and we'll all reconvene in about 2020.